Welcome back to another video. This week we're going to dive back into Lyrum Classic. We're going to look at how you can use the masking system to essentially work with layers within Lyrum. Now I know you're thinking, there is no layer system in Lyrum Classic. And you're absolutely right, but the masking system works very similarly to how you'd imagine a layer system, and certainly how a layer system works in things like Capture One, or even Photoshop when you're talking about layer masks. We're gonna talk about all the benefits that brings you, all the fun stuff that comes along with working like that. Let's dive into it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each of week is on every Tuesday. We bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. Now, we're gonna dive into Lyrum Classic. We're gonna work with this photo here, and we're going to look at how we can use that masking system to essentially start working with layers within Lyrum and all that benefits that that brings. Let's take a look straight away. So the first thing we might want to do with a photo and generally with any photo is we might want to actually do some global edits. Now, this is where we affect the photo as a whole, right? We're affecting these sliders over on the right and we're affecting the entire photo. And I like to think of this a little bit if we're working with this layer system. A little bit like we're affecting the base layer of the photo, right? The, the overall photo, the full layer, that base layer, all of these sliders, we're just affecting the whole thing. So let's go ahead and begin by, I'm going to bring some shadows in a little bit. Might bring the highlights down just a touch as well. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring the saturation down a little bit. It's, it's a little bit, it's very colorful. Now, I immediately like what we've done with this photo. It's just a pretty subtle difference, but it gives us a great starting point to start editing this using masks, which is where we're gonna get this kind of layer system from. So to do that, we're gonna come up to the masking panel just up here. We're gonna click here, and the first mask we're gonna actually create here, I think we're gonna go for the sky. Now, Lightroom's gonna work out where the sky is and mask that out, there we go, it's done a great job. And actually, I'm gonna come up here to this panel where we can now see all of our masks. We've just got one here. Double click on mask one, and I'm gonna name this sky that way we know that this mask or this layer is the sky layer right so it's right here and what i'm going to do with this layer is i'm just going to bring the highlights down just a touch right i think i'm going to bring some warmth into the sky now i'm going to leave the sky as we've done it there so we've not done loads to it but the massive benefit of this system is it's so easy to go back and change that so if we decide okay actually do you know what? i don't like the sky being a little bit warmer Let's go back to the sky layer. We just click on it there and adjust the color temperature. It's so straightforward and easy. And because we've adjusted different parts of the photo individually, it's so easy to go back and then change those later. And with a naming convention like this, everything's so straightforward. So, okay, we're going to go ahead and create a new mask. Now, there's lots of options for what we could do here. We could create a subject mask, which is going to just mask me out. We could actually create individual masks of things like eyes, skin, clothing, stuff like that. But for this photo, I'm actually gonna go ahead and do a linear gradient and we're gonna bring that in from the bottom. So I'm gonna bring that up like this and then I'm gonna move that down. So it's nicely sort of feathered and I'm gonna name this. So I'm gonna come up mask one, I'm gonna go linear and then in brackets, I'm gonna put bottom up. Now I use this technique all the time for portrait photos, for landscape photos, those are the main ones, but really this works for almost anything. And you end up building up these different layers and you affect the different parts of the photo individually. Oh, it's so useful. Let's go ahead and actually bring the exposure down of this bottom part. I wanna darken this bottom part of the photo because we wanna draw the eye up, right? To our subject, which is me, which is just up here. Okay, great, that's worked quite well. Next, we're gonna go ahead and create another mask. We're gonna go linear gradient again Let's bring this one in from the side. Now this one, we're gonna go ahead and up the exposure a little bit. When you come down, we're gonna go some negative dehaze. And I'm gonna name this one linear left to right. All right, so now I know that that's a linear gradient coming in from the left to the right. That has kind of simulated this feeling of sunlight coming in from the left. So what I might do then is come back to the base layer or just the overall global edits and actually bring that overall exposure down a little bit, darken that photo a little bit since we're bringing in some brightness from the left like that. And maybe not quite as much, but something like that. There we go, okay. Let's go back into that masking panel, right. Create new mask, let's go ahead and do a brush, right? And what I wanna do, I've got auto mask ticked on here. I've got a reasonably low flow, 29. 
I just want to paint in on some of these shadowed areas because what I'm going to probably do is just brighten them up a touch, right? I don't want to go too crazy, but just a little bit, right? So they're not quite so dark. Let's just bring shadows up a little bit. So I'm going to name this subject shadows, right? So we've just brought that up. I could even bring the exposure up just a touch. I don't want to go too crazy, but it just brightens those darker areas a little bit, brings out a little bit of detail, which I think is important. Right, great. This is looking pretty good. I think we can always see a before and after of the whole photo by pressing the backslash key. So this is where we started with the photo. This is where we've taken it. So a reasonably subtle difference. We can go ahead and create another new mask. Let's go linear gradient, bring that down from the top. Now, what I'm gonna do with this one is a little bit different. I'm gonna right click on the mask and go intersect mask with sky. I want this to only be applied on top of the sky. So it's a, it's a linear gradient that will then only be applied on top of the sky like so. And I'm gonna bring the exposure down just a little bit. I also wanna bring that saturation down just a touch so we don't have this really intense sky. I'm gonna call this linear and then brackets sky down. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So let's look at before and after again. So we've got before and after, and we've got all of these different layers to actually play around with. So sky, our linear gradients, our brush on our subject here. We know exactly where we are. We can go back and edit any of those at any time. Now we can also use this to do some color grading, right? So for example, let's go ahead and create a new mask. Let's use a brush and we're gonna go ahead and actually brush on, let's use a slightly higher flow here over the kind of red on my top here. We're gonna actually use this to color grade this, but because the color is red, we don't wanna to get too close to things like the skin tones, which will be kind of in the orange area and red and orange, you know, not that dissimilar. So we're gonna actually use a mask to mask it out. And then we can actually come down to here to point color and select something like this color here. And this is gonna allow us to actually affect this color specifically. So let's go ahead and maybe make this a little bit more kind of, a little bit more sort of orange. Let's up the range so that we've got more of that initial color that we actually selected and, and more of the colors around it. And I'm gonna bring the saturation down on it a little bit as well. So something like, something like that. Let's go ahead and name this mask clothing and then top red. That's pretty good. And if you actually use this little eye icon here, we can hide that. And you can see that was what it looked like before. This is what it looks like now. So that's making a big difference to the photo. I think it blends better with the feeling of the photo that we've got, but it's not affecting skin tones. It's not affecting this color in the background here. It's not affecting any of the color of the kind of pebbles or the plants. It's just affecting this because we've used the point color to select that color specifically. And we've used a mask to contain that to where that clothing is. So we've really used that kind of layer system to our advantage here. We can also go in now and create another new mask up here. And maybe we wanna go brush. And actually for this one, let's go for a lower flow. Let's maybe turn auto mask back on. That's gonna help us keep within the lines. And I want to just brush over some of the brighter areas of our subject. So something like this, right? And then maybe we're just gonna bring that exposure up just a little bit add just a little bit of warmth to really accentuate the sunlight hitting onto our subject here as well. Now let's look at the entire before and after of where we've got to. So before, this is where we started. This is how the photo looked out of camera. This is where we've got to. Let's name that last layer. So let's go ahead and call this skin. And I'm gonna put sunlight. There we go. It's actually not just the skin, but I know what that means, right? Now, regardless of what you think of the edit, so this is my sort of personal preference, right? I've leaning into this a little bit at the moment, a little bit kind of flattened uh, some of the colors, some of the exposure. I like darkening the tops and the bottoms, a little bit of a kind of color grade. I like the feel of this, it's, it's a little bit cinematic, but regardless of what you think of that, the system that we used here allows us to very quickly and easily go in and adjust so much of the photo, right? So we've used masks, which I think are so important to the way you edit in Lyrum. We've used masks here to really go in and create a lot more control and nuance and subtlety over how we actually shape the final edit of this photo. And to me, by using them like this and with this panel, it really feels like using, using layers like you would in Photoshop. 
and absolutely in Capture One as well. This In this situation, it's, it's very much the way you would use layers in Capture One. It's so much easier to go, do you know what? What would it look like if the sky wasn't darkened like that? Well, we could just turn that mask off and we can see, okay, actually it's a little bit brighter. Now I like it on, but maybe you prefer it off. Super easy to take that out, right? What if we just leave the clothing as it was? There it is, right? It's on its own layer. What if we actually just don't have that sunlight coming in from the left that we've accentuated? Well, we turn that off. Actually, that does look pretty good. There's so many different ways we can do this, right? Darken that bottom. Let's turn that off, turn that back on. You can quickly see all of it. And with all of the masks, we can click and hold this eye icon up here and you can see what all of the masks are doing. So the actual basic global edits are really quite subtle. They're not doing that much to the photo, whereas the masks are doing all of that heavy lifting. And because they're separated out, you can just, you can alter them as much as you want, as quickly as you want, and as individually as you want. There's so much control. Oh, it's such a great way to work. Now, I'd love to know, do you use masks in Lyrum in a different way to this kind of setup? Do you go for anything in particular when you do it? Is there something specific that you don't think I've touched on here that you like to do when you're using masks in Lyrum? I'd love to know because it's super interesting. And I actually think we can all learn from each other a little bit about how we do this kind of stuff. I think it's really useful to see. I'd also love to know if there's anything specific you'd like to see in a future Tutorial Tuesday. We've got a nice few planned out over the next few weeks, which I think is quite exciting. It's always nice to have a bit of a plan, right? But anything specific you would like to see, let me know in the comments because I always wanna make the stuff that you actually wanna see. Always wanna make stuff that's gonna be helpful. Now, if you haven't done it already, don't forget to like and subscribe. There's new content all the time, new videos every week. I will see you in the next video. But until then, as always, thanks for watching. That's it.